Hi and welcome back. Yes, this is yet another Olivetti. This time it's an um, M380-40 and the M380, that tells us this should be an Intel 8386 and I printed out all the documentation for it that I have. This should be holding a CPU running at 33 megahertz. And I think that's the fastest Intel 8386 DX that you can get. Let me uh, take you closer too and let's have a walk around the computer. So I took away the monitor, which was a color monitor, and the PS2 keyboard. So let's have a look at the beautiful computer. We have seen this cabinet before and um, once I turn it around I'll give you the cabinet number and then you can see all the other computers that actually have the same cabinet but it's another computer inside it. It's different from the outside with everything that you see out here compared to other models even though they have the same casing but let me just briefly run through it. So over here we have the Olivetti logo with the M380-4 uh, sorry, 40 of course. There is a green light with an on um, icon on it and there's a hard disk with orange or maybe yellow. There's something here. I think this is a reset button. I'm not sure. This is a loudspeaker. This is the on and off. Here we have the key that, uh, well, the lock that can lock the cabinets and uh, we have the floppy hard disk, whatever bay out in this area over here. And I see there's a three and a half inch um, floppy disk drive in it. This side, the usual grill. The other side, the same. And then we come to the back. And in the back here, we can see this is the model XP2655. Uh, so we have seen this cabinet many times before. So it should be a Swift to get into it and rip everything out because I um, definitely need to clean this one. This is a little bit dirty. And um, this area is the power supply with the fan. We have power in and power out. We have the PS2 keyboard, the mouse, and we have a parallel serial and video, which is VGA. Up here, I can see we have two cards in it. Uh, the first one is a um, Ethernet card, some sort of network card. I will assume it's the Olivetti branded um, uh, Ethernet card that actually holds a Motorola 68000 CPU. This, no idea, but it states A and B. I don't know, is this for joysticks or what? I, I do not know. So um, it features uh, four possibilities to expand this. So let me unscrew these two screws here and um, then we'll open it up. And the casing is yellow to bits and it is extreme, not extreme, but it's very dirty, but nothing that I can fix. If I look inside it, this is very weird. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's something on this metal plate. I don't know what it is, but we'll clean all this out. Besides that, it looks fine. I don't see anything broken. And now we're inside the actual computer. This is the floppy disk and hard disk bay. It's super easy to get uh, to take out. Um, so let me unhook the hard disk um, cable. So obviously there is a hard disk in this one. Power supply. Over here we have the floppy disk, so let's take power and the floppy disk ca um, cable out of that one. The only thing we need to do is push in on this one and then we can just lift it out here. And whilst I'm saying that, I can see something is broken down there. So let me um, do that. Open this one up and out comes the hard disk, which is our corner hard disk. This one, if I have a close look. CP30126 and this label states that it's a type 22 in the BIOS and it's a 120 megabyte hard disk that's inside this one. Let me take this to the side. 
Obviously we have the power connector over here. And let me just unhook this, take out the floppy disk cable. It's very dirty inside. The hard disk cable sits a little bit further underneath over here. So we need to remove the power supply in order to gain access to remove this one down here. We have our start of today. Come back to the motherboard later on. Let's look at the cards. I see the two cards here. This is the network card that I was talking about. So let me briefly take these two cards out. And now we should be able to slide them out. There we go. 16-bit cards, even though it's a 32-bit um, CPU. This is the card, and over here, if I turn this a little bit around, this is the CPU. This is the Motorola 68000 running at 10 megahertz that drives this whole board, which is a computer in itself. There's a BIOS in it. I will remove the BIOS, make a dump, and put it on my archive.org. I have new uses for these. I think I have four or five of these until now, uh, just simply because this is not what we used to do, uh, using. This board is called GO527-8, sorry, dash A, and the date is uh, 11, 1991. Next card is the card. I have literally no idea what it is. Um, not even looking at it. Um, it's called, so the Olivetti number is GO478. It's from 06, 1991. The computer itself is also from 1991. Um, I cannot tell you what it is, but there's RAM up here. So uh, maybe we'll have a look at it later on. I need to see what this actually is. I have no idea. It doesn't say anything much besides the Olivetti markings on it. So This means that we now have more access to the actual computer. In order to get um, the power supply out, there's a screw here. And on this back plane here, uh, racer card if you want to say, um, there are two screws up there. So let me take these three screws out and then we can remove the back pane and the power supply. They are unscrewed now, they stay in. So if I take out the back pane, There we go. And there should be a number here. It's called IN24. Uh, sorry, IN284. And it's uh, 09 1991. It's a passive backplane. This should give us access to take out the power supply. We just need to remember that the on and off button here goes all the way into this and this is fragile, this can break. So we need to remember when we lift the power supply out, unscrew this one, so there's a clip here. We just need to bend it a little bit out and then we can lift it straight up. Just like that, and remember the power button. And here we have the power supply. This is a 220 to 240 volts power supply. We'll open this one up, inspect it, and see if it actually works. With that removed, I can now take out the hard disk cable and just have a look. This is super dirty inside. And last, we have this area over here, which also can be taken out. There are two clips down here. Again, sadly very fragile. They usually break, so be very careful with these two. Um, there's a as the um, lights here and, uh, and uh, volume, there must be some cabling going to the board somewhere and it's over there. So we need to remember to take this off. Let's start to see if we can get this one out. I thought it was pushing down. It's not. It's definitely pushing up. So um, there we go. Like that. Pushing up. And then you, it slides this way out. 
which then reveals the cable here, which should be able just to lift out. There we go. So, front pane, which now leaves us with the motherboard. And uh, if I briefly look at the motherboard, um, there's the screw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 screws. So let me rip out the screws. Before I do that, I just wanna, I notice that I think this is where there should have been a battery. There's no battery, I, don't, I didn't see any batteries. So this is where you hook up the battery, Velcro, and it most likely goes in there. We need to look at the schematics for the board and see if this is for the power. Over here we have the BIOS. I will take the BIOS out and make a dump also of that one and put it on archive.org. Let me unscrew all of these. Um, actually, this can also come out. So um, if I take all these, uh, both of these two screws out, you can either lift it to the left or right. I can't remember. It was to the right. There we go. So that comes off very easy. It's very easy to get access into this cabinet type. It's super easy. There's no problem. You just need to be careful with all the um, plastic stuff that's around it. And I told you when I um, was looking in the beginning that something is broken and I can see this clip down here. I'm not sure if you can see it. This clip has broken off over there. Um, and I don't have it. Okay, let me unscrew all these screws and then come back. I think that was all the screws. I'm not sure whether it's still screwed in the back. Let me just briefly see. It seems to, so I just need to take these four, oh, sorry, six out in order to lift the board out. I'm pretty sure, yeah, we need to do that. So give me a second. And with the last one almost out, I think we are ready to see if we can get the motherboard out, the casing. So it should be lifting out and there we go. What a wonderful, but also a little bit dirty motherboard. And here we have our star of today. Let me take this one also to the side and let's just briefly talk about all the shieldings. So there's a shielding in there. There's a shielding on this plate that was in the back over here. Needs to take that one off. There are multiple shieldings inside this cabinet. This is one, the two sides are one, and there's one, two, and three over here. So that needs to take off. I need to um, unclip this. This is just down here. Then this piece can be lifted out with the uh, 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 plate down here with all the electronics. And then I can take that shielding off, which then will leave me with plastic one side that I'll wash and scrub and look at my fingers and all the metal here, I will clean all this off. So let me arrange all the screws, sort them out, arrange the card, clean all this and then uh, come back to you so we can um, test the power supply. Well, everything has been cleaned and washed, scrubbed and um, yeah, it's time for the power supply. I have blown some air inside the power supply and I have taken out these two screws. Um, this kind of power supply have also been featured earlier on the channel due to that it's the same cabinet that we've been looking at earlier. So it's just two screws and then open this one up like this. There's a hinge in the back here. So it just opens like that, very easy. Uh, I have blown air in it and um, I don't think there's anything out of the ordinary that we need to. Let's see if we can get some light in. Like this maybe. Um, I don't see anything. There are no reefers in Olivetti's um, power supplies, so that's always nice. Um, well, maybe it should be... I just want to see. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's just dust. Everything is just dust. 
Um, well, maybe not. Um, let me see. I'm not sure you can see it due to the lack of um, light. This is um, not me and this is just from the factory. This is actually broken. And I can see they tried to fix it up here. So this plastic hinge around this has been broken off. Or it's broken, but it doesn't matter. It will, if uh, everything else works, this power supply will be working fine. Um, yeah, I think there's nothing much to do besides just trying to turn it on and uh, see if it runs, right? Uh, yeah, let's do that. So, I know we had difficulties with this power, uh, this hard disk before. It seems to be more or less completely broken, but I'll risk it and I'll hook it up just so, to, just so that the power supply gets a little bit of load. And um, yeah, what can I say? Obviously black is always ground, red, there are a few of these. They are five volts. The orange one, the single one here, that's uh, plus 12, the yellow one, that is minus 12 and the white one is power okay. Let me just quickly verify because it's also stated it should be, no, it actually doesn't say anything. They usually print on the PCB what voltage comes out of the leads, but uh, in this case not. But this is nevertheless what we're aiming for. So let me uh, try to find um, ground over here. We can find 5 volt over there, like this. Connectivity, no voltage. Hard disk is hooked up. I need some power to it in the back. Just want to see. There we go. And um, let's turn it on and see. It's clicking. This is working. This is 5.2. So I need to take the red one off in order to get up to um, orange, which is number one, two, and three. There we have 11.75. And if we take um, red, sorry, it's called yellow, that's minus 12. So power supply is working. Perfect. Let me shut the power supply off. There we go. And I think we'll just uh, try and hook it up to the motherboard. I'm very excited to see um, the actual motherboard. It's up there, if you can see. It's clean. I put it in the cabinet, so we're ready. So let me um, just get rid of this. Well, hook this back into the casing, and then um, let's have a look at the motherboard, right? Okay, let's have a brief look at the motherboard. In this area, we have the star of today. This is the Intel 386. This one is the DX version. So this offers 32-bit um, access out of the actual chip to the memory. And uh, this one runs at 33 megahertz. Uh, I would like to state that this is the version IV of the chip, because if you had the same chip without the IV, or there could have been a double sigma sign down there, that means you actually are ending up with this uh, CPU that is broken inside. If you want to read up on that, go on Wiki, you can read loads and loads and um, information about that. So go check your 386 and ensure that you have a IV or a double sigma down here, or both even. Down here we have the um, cache controller chip that actually handles the cache memory up here. Over in this area we have two sockets um, that are not populated on this board. These are for MAT coprocessors. Pro. You will either populate this one or that one. This one is for the Intel 387. And the reason why you need to have a coprocessor is because the 386 didn't come with a core processor built in. You needed to have a 486 in order to have a core processor inside that. So you could have had a 33 megahertz Intel 387 here. Up here, and this is one of the reasons I find this very attractive, this board here, is that this is a Vitek 
co-processor that you can put in there. The Vitek co-processor was a bit faster in doing the calculations than the Intel ones. The problem or challenge is that the application that you're running that needed a co-processor, those had to be special compiled in order for them to use the VTEC um, sets of commands in here. If I uh, move a little bit over here, we have three chips labeled uh, Olivetti. This is the BCUE, this one is the MCUE, actually version number two, so newest one, and this is the DPU. And all of this is the chipset handling everything from memory controlling, data um, buffering, parity checks, and uh, real-time clock, and so on. So forth. That's a, that's, this is basically just the chipset. If I move over here, we have memory here. This is 8 megabytes. This is bank number 0. Over here, you could also have populated this. This is bank number 1 with the same amount. So this could have been 8 megabytes in total. This is the parity check for it. Over there, we have 12 slots where you can populate so the computer can be in a total of 52. This, the first four is uh, bank number 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. If we go up here, let me move this a little bit down. Up here, we have the chip that is handling the floppy disk. So this is the floppy disk controller chip. This is for the hard disk. Up here, I have figured out this is where you have to, had to have a um, battery that is hooked up here. The plus for the battery, I have, it doesn't state it on the motherboard, sadly, but I have traced it. So the first one from your left, that is um, plus. And the third one from left again is uh, minus. I have made a battery compartment with uh, batteries inside, and I can actually hook this in here. Um, and that will then later on when we turn this on store all the bias settings. The bias, the chip is this one up here. This is a CMOS flash memory um, and this is a 128 times 8. I have made a dump on this content and I put it on archive.org. So if anybody needs that, it's already up there. Then we have a um, few other uh, components for the CPU. Um, one of them is this one over there. I'm not sure you can see it. If I check out the bus expansion card that have um, four 16-bit slots, this is a passive one. Let me check this out. This one, that chip up there, that is for the serial and parallel controller unit. This one is for the PS2. That means we're done with all of this over there. What's left is this area up here. This is the VGA. This is the VGA chip. It has a supported chip down here and over here. This is the memory, 512 in this case, and this is the um, um, video extender connector you can have hooked into here. That actually makes what I wanted to say about the boards. I will um, move on putting everything back into the computer and then once that's in I'll come back to you and we will have, um, well, we'll see if we can make this run because um, that's actually the goal of it, right? So let me come back once I put everything back together again, and then we'll try to turn it on. It's all put together again, and um, I didn't take the casing on top in the case that I need to, I don't know, the hard disk could be uh, not working, the floppy disk drive could actually also not be working, or everything could just be broken. But um, I hooked up the battery, it's staying outside because I don't want this floating in the computer once I'm done because I need to find the correct battery that actually comes with this uh, computer. Um, once I've done that, I'll just swap this over eventually. So let's power to it, keyboards on, the VGA uh, flat screen monitor over here. So all I can do is turning on the button here and see if it works, cross our fingers. It is doing something. I'm hearing the hard disk. Something, something. Not sure why there's nothing on the screen. Oh, it seems to be turning on. The key button lit up and it's up. Yes, there we go. All good. So the BIOS is revision 1.06. The CPU is an i8386. Passed. 
base RAM is 640, it's counting out the extended memory. This should end up with four megabytes. Due to the fact this hasn't been turned on, um, the, the BIOS settings are gone. So this will somehow have to come into a BIOS setting. There we go, yes, amazing. I also heard a tiny click of the floppy disk drive. I have aligned myself with the um, MS-DOS 5.0 Microsoft slash Olivetti DOS disk drive if we need to use this, if we can't boot on the hard disk. So we need to go in. I've talked a lot about these BIOS. This is a, I'm sorry to say it Olivetti, but this is a crappy BIOS setting, but it doesn't matter. You need, we need to go in and tell that it's type 22 for the hard disk. I looked up in the documentation this corner hard disk that's in here, it is the Type 22, so it's the original hard disk. Let me um, press 1 for America. Uh, we need the time. So just before, briefly, in order for all of this to be saved, you need to go into F1, F2, F3, 4 and 5. Once that's you have been in there and confirming everything, you can then store everything to the BIOS and then it will reboot and then it works. Um, F1, which is time, I have absolutely no idea what time it is. Uh, the date, uh, this is American, so it's months or seven. I don't know, what, why are we now 10? I don't know, 2023. Hard disk, um, in this case, uh, need to pay, you need to pay attention there too, because you can populate this with two hard disks, so you need to do the two, both of them. So the first one is our hard disk in here. So that should be 22, like this. Weird thing, it states now 116 megabyte, but on front it's 120, I have no clue. Then we need to go down here in order to do that. That is tap, and we just leave it blank. Press enter to confirm, now we're done. Let's go to F4, which is the floppy disk drive. This is a 1.4. The video, because this is VDA, we need to select standard and enter. And now if I press enter again, this has been stored. And then it reboots. And if we're lucky, it will boot up on the hard disk. I have no idea. Let's see. Fix disk. This should... I'm not sure if you heard that clicking noise from the hard disk. That was nice. And now the computer is actually uh, beeping. That was the beep again. So I'm sad to say that the hard disk is not working. That's sad. But uh, let's wait. This needs to figure out that it's not done. So I'll put in a uh, dust disk so we can just at least uh, go into dust to see if this floppy disk is working. So let's uh, come back. Now you saw the arrow. And now it's going to boot from the floppy disk. Yes, it is. Well, you get one thumbs up because we are still problem with the hard disk. But um, let's see. Yeah, well, I don't know. Let, let, give me a second. And I'm in the dust prompt so I can look at the floppy disk drive. So the floppy disk drive is at least working. What does it do if I do F disk? Will it recognize? No. So, sorry, this is in Danish. So it is absolutely complaining about the hard disk. I'm sorry, the hard disk is dead. Give me a second. I have one of these. We could put in a compact bus thing. I actually think, yeah, this is, um, this is holding a compact flash card. Let me, um, let me hook this in here instead of the hard disk and then, uh, then come back to you. As you can see, I put in the complex flash card now and um, I have turned off the computer and even the battery. So I hope the CMOS is now empty. So we need to go back in. The reason for that, we need to specify how this complex flash is working for this computer. Sadly, and this is why I stated, sorry, Olivetti again, your BIOS is crap. Uh, you cannot have your um, own way of configuring your BIOS. If we look at the manual, you only have like 24 selections you can select between. 
So it's hard coded. You cannot put in whatever you want. So even though this is a two gigabyte um, compact flask card I put in, I can only select one of the maximum here. So if I select a type number seven, or oh, wait a minute, no, sorry, type number 11, which will give me 304 megabytes. I know you can just format this to two gigabyte or one on our 500 megabyte. It doesn't matter. You can, it, the system itself will just read what's on the content, but you cannot boot from it on an Olivetti BIOS if the specifications are not the same. So therefore I need to go into the BIOS. I need to select um, 11, format the compact fast card for so the, the F disk will then give me 304, I'll do that and system format it. I will put some software on it and then I will come back to you once all of that is done. So let me just fix all this. Okay, we're back in the BIOS. Everything is cleaned out, so I will uh, continue everything again. And on the hard disk, I'll select type 11, like this. This gives me 304 megabytes. This one is empty. F4 for the floppy disk. And F5 over here for standard. And then we'll have to boot again. Um, I've, I've formatted the compact flash cards, so hopefully we'll end up. Now it says fix this, one present floppy disk one person and it's booting up now we can do thumbs up sadly the hard disk will not be working so i'll rip the hard disk out eventually um, we just need to uh, mount this into the actual slots over there and then i can take the computer and do something with it sadly we lost if there were any software on it because i wanted to have some software for that weird card with the two weird plugs in the back of the cards. Um, it holds a CPU, an Intel 8186 running at 10 megahertz. There's RAM on it, there's a timer, there's serial and parallel controller. There's everything. It's a, it's a freaking computer in itself on a board. And it's only Olivetti branded. There's nothing, it's, just, it's not that they bought something from another, it's, it's an Olivetti board. I don't know what it is. Maybe this has something to do with a special item you can hook up to this board to, I don't know, control something. I, I have literally no ideas. I hope somebody will figure this out for me. I cannot find any documentation. So, cool. I, um, I also, just so you know what we, the plan is, I have original Windows uh, 3.11 Windows for Workgroups. And uh, while you are not watching, I have copied everything, all these eight disks onto the, uh, the card. So if I go on win, I can't remember what did I call it. There we go, Windows 3.11. So I wanna install Windows 3.11. Just before we do that, I also put um, check it on it. So let's, let's, let's do that. Tools. Oh. Check it, just to see um, what it actually is, is stating in the program. So let me just um, briefly run through this one. So let's have a look at the configuration. DOS version 5, the ROM BIOS is saying Olivetti. The ROM BIOS is from, um, that must be August 2nd, 1901. And it's an 8386 80 machine. I am struggling to understand why it's saying that it's the AT&T 6300 plus model. That's not correct, but nevertheless, I don't know why. There's no macro processor, RAM and stuff. This is VGA. We have the 318 megabytes and there. Let's do the benchmark. It's always fun. <laughs> well, it's not that fun when it's a 386 because it's just gonna be way over here. But let's just see. So 9,337 dry stones. And uh, the wet stone is uh, 170,000 K. So it, it's, it's, it's quite fast computer. 
if we go out is there anything else we could look at i don't think so no let's let's just go out and um let me uh, go back honestly i think it's it's so many years since i installed windows uh, 311 so i'm not sure how that will go but let's just try it out and um I'll do the express, so that's enter. And I'll let it do its thing. Hopefully it will work. And once it's all done, um, I will come back and then we will see if it actually works. And I'll in the meantime also find um, a PS2 mouse and connect it in the back. So see you in a bit. And if I'm not mistaken, we are done. So um, setup needs to know the application name for DOS Edit. This is the editor, that's correct. There we go. I don't want to run, so I'll skip the tutorial. And yay, wouldn't you know, we need to restart the computer. So I'll come back. I think I can just write win. There we are. Windows for Workgroups version 3.11. And it's freaking working. We go to control manual. Everything looks nice and as it should be, so perfect. Let me close find a game so there should be games down here solitaire everything is just working as it should it is perfect very nice i think um, what i need to do i need to take uh, the compact flex card hook it to uh, in in one of the slots and then i'll put the casing on and then i'll come back and then we can wrap all of this up This could have been your typical setup back in the early 90s. You had your computer, obviously not a flat screen. You would have had one of those com uh, screens in the back, the CRTs, but uh, for the video camera, I need to show you this one. You had your keyboard, your mouse, and then you had a matrix printer, the good old matrix printer. This one I will have to feature eventually. I've been saying this for a long time, I know, but nevertheless. This one is running Windows 3.11 for workgroups. I'm super happy that we got this up and running. I'm at the same time sad that we lost the hard disk inside it because I needed to see if there was something on that hard disk related to this special card that's inside this computer still. That card that holds an Intel 8186 CPU with a timer, with serial, with parallel controller and memory and stuff. I have no clue what it is. I hope that some of you may know what it is. Um, I will assume with the two plugs in the back, it's something related to serial communication, maybe parallel communication, some kind of communication to something that you hook up to this card but I don't know what it is. As you can see here, it's scrolling by while we're talking. This is the card. And again, if you know anything about it, please do write to me or make a comment. And um, with this, I would like to um, say thank you. Please give me a thumbs up. You know the subscribe. This helps me heaps and months. Uh, this is how I spread out the knowledge of my Olivetti computer collection amongst all the other collected items that I have on the channel and that I really enjoy showing to all of you. It's hot, it's summer, and I'm actually also now going on vacation. So I'm not sure when I'll be back. This could take a month. I'm not sure. Um, but nevertheless, I would like to say thank you for staying this long watching this Olivetti M380-40 featuring the most likely fastest Intel 
386, the TX running at 33 megahertz. And with that, again, thank you. See you soon. Goodbye.